We began using photovoltaics, or solar cells, for our space programs to provide electricity for our satellites. Over the past 20 years, the federal government has contributed about $1 billion, and private industry twice that much to bring photovoltaics down to Earth. There are several different photovoltaic systems available today, but they work on the same principle. As sunlight falls on the cells, it is directly converted into direct current, or DC, electricity. An inverter then changes the DC electricity into an alternating current, or AC power, that is compatible with most electric systems. PV systems are most commonly used for remote, standalone applications, like this emergency phone in California, and this water pump on a Nevada ranch. In these situations, it is less expensive to install photovoltaics than it is to lay and maintain power lines. But today, utilities are also integrating solar power into their grids. This 300 kilowatt solar power plant in Texas, for example, supplies electricity to the city of Austin electric utility. A photovoltaic plant such as this is a great peak generator for the city of Austin. It puts out power during the peak period on a hot sunny day when we most require it. Uh, and it'll put out enough energy for about 100 to 200 homes on that period. And we like to use photovoltaics as a peaking generator. Here, passive trackers allow the flat arrays of solar cells to follow the sun. Passive in this case means that no electricity or motors are required to move the trackers. At another site in Austin, a different photovoltaic technology is being used. This system uses lenses to concentrate the sun, so fewer solar cells are needed. The project was a cooperative effort of the U.S. Department of Energy, the state of Texas, the city of Austin Electric Utility, 3M, and NTEC. The system produces approximately 300 kilowatts worth of power. Uh, it provides power for the lighting load on the parking ramp. The lighting load is approximately 90 kilowatts. The excess power is fed into the utility grid and the utility then utilizes it for approximately 100 homes within the region. This illustrates the concept of concentrating the light by using a plastic Fresnel lens and concentrating it down to a small photovoltaic cell for the production of electricity. Photovoltaics can be sited virtually anywhere in the United States. Someday, homes all over the country can have solar cells on their roofs that will provide electricity to their homes and to the local utility. In Gardner, Massachusetts, that someday is now. We put photovoltaic arrays on 30 houses and we're interested in some of the technical questions, like what happens when these systems put power back into our grid. All of these systems are grid connected and all of them can feed energy back onto the distribution system when the sun is shining brightly, like right now. Yep, this meter is turning, so that means energy is flowing back to our distribution system and your meter is going backward, your billing meter, so you're saving money. That's great. A good system, isn't it? Is. It is, it sure is. These systems are too expensive right now for a person to buy, but in 10 years, we think the cost will come down dramatically. In fact, you should be able to buy them at any large merchandiser in the next century. Research and development have dramatically reduced the cost of photovoltaics in the past 10 years. The Department of Energy is further addressing the cost through a five-year, $110 million development partnership with industry called the Photovoltaic Manufacturing Technology Initiative, or PVMAT. PVMAT is designed to reduce the cost of manufacturing the solar cells. Here you see one process in which silicon is shaped or grown into long octagonal tubes. Thin wafers are cut from the flat sides of the octagon by a laser beam and then processed into electrically active solar cells. You can see that the tubes, this is a section of one, the tubes are hollow and thin wall. Our technology uh, in PV mat is to grow even thinner walls on the tubes than we are currently growing so that we can reduce the cost of the expensive silicon starting material. The Photovoltaic Utility Scale Applications Project, or PVUSA near Sacramento, California, 
is testing promising collector technologies in a utility setting. PVUSA is another example of public-private cooperation. The partners include the U.S. Department of Energy, the California Energy Commission, the Electric Power Research Institute, and a number of electric utilities. There's no uh, air pollution or water pollution associated with a photovoltaic plant such as this, and we don't require any water for cooling. So the site requirements are minimal and the environmental impacts are minimal, which is very important for a utility these days. And photovoltaics may even be used for transportation soon. As more and more electric cars appear on American highways, photovoltaics may also provide the electricity to run them. By the end of this decade, solar carports like this are expected to provide a source of emission-free daytime recharging for electric vehicles. The idea of the carport is that it will fill up your batteries, if you will, during the daytime so we don't have to burn oil or burn gas or, or import it to supply that energy to recharge the battery. You can do that during the daytime without any of the emissions associated with burning oil or burning gas. Southern California Edison has taken the lead in developing the solar carport concept because 200,000 pollution-free electric cars are expected to be on the Southern California highways by the year 2000. Unlike photovoltaics, which convert sunlight directly to electricity, solar thermal power plants use the sun to heat a liquid that is used to generate steam to power a turbine to produce electricity. The largest operating solar thermal plant is located in the Mojave Desert in California and sells electricity to Southern California Edison. We have 150 megawatts of power that are being generated by the solar plants here. That's enough for the electrical needs for 150,000 people on a typical day. Uh, we have five plants here, each of 30 megawatts, and we make more solar electricity than any place else in the world.